Yesterday we looked at understanding the mind. And we dealt with that extensively. But this afternoon we are going to look at understanding the source of excellence. Understanding what? Understanding the source of excellence. Let us begin by recognizing that when we talk about excellence in our context, excellence comes from God. We are talking about the excellence that proceeds from God. But the God order of excellence has specific channels. And we are going to look at some of these channels very quickly this afternoon. And I believe, God, that each one of us, as we activate these channels of excellence, an end will come to every experience of failure. Amen. If you believe that's for you, say louder, amen. amen. An end will come to every experience of mediocrity. Amen. An end will come to every experience of excessive and unproductive struggle. Amen. There are those who try, they struggle, they study, but somehow they seem not to have the outcome. The end does not justify the means. They have put in their best, but they don't end up the best. But via the encounter you are having this afternoon, an end is coming to that dimension of struggle. Somebody believe it, say loud, man. Now, there are various channels, and we are going to look at five of them. Five vital connections to the force of excellence available in redemption. Five vital connections. Number one connection is what I refer to as the new birth connection. The new birth connection. There is no man that can have a new experience living an old life. Everyone that expects to have a brand new experience requires inside of them a brand new order of life. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, the Bible said, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And we discover that that all things, according to scriptures, affects all dimensions of man's life, including the mind. So one of our vital and the most fundamental connection to the force of excellence is new birth. In John chapter 3 verse 8, the Bible said that the wind blows where it leaves. It said you don't know where it's coming from or where it is going but you hear the sound of it it says so is every man that is born of the spirit it means that everyone that is a child of god everyone that is born again everyone that has surrendered to christ has become a supernatural being say with me i'm a supernatural being come on say loud i'm a supernatural being what does supernatural mean? The word supernatural means superior to the natural. Superior to the natural. So it means that if I am born again, if I'm in Christ, then I am superior to those that are natural. I have a superior standing. God has given me superior ability. I am loaded with superior capacity. Is somebody getting it now? So according to scriptures, therefore, it means that when a man becomes born again, that individual has been upgraded. He is no more what he used to be before. Maybe he could read before and he will not understand, but then now there's a new ability. There's a new capacity. He has been loaded with something that he did not contain before. That is why even though your face may not change, your eyes may not change. Your ears are still where they were before. But when you become born again, what changes inside of you affects every dimension of your life. Is somebody getting it now? If you are familiar, for example, with anything having to do with computers, you will know that you don't need to change the body. All you need to do is to change what is inside. If you can change what is inside, you will change the performance. In racing, in car racing, there is what they call drag racing. 
And in drag racing, you find individuals, they will carry a vehicle. The vehicle is an old vehicle. You look at the body of the car, maybe 1970, 1960, old vehicle. But they put inside of that vehicle a new engine. Some of those engines are actually like jet engines. When you put that car beside a 2019 car, we're in 2018 now, you put it beside a 2019 vehicle, the 2019 man will be looking at him and be smiling, believing that he cannot catch him. But the engine inside those vehicles, drag racing vehicles, if you press the throttle, the car lifts up. Because the power content is beyond the body. By the time the man presses his throttle and finishes pressing the throttle down, the man in the 2019 car is still at the starting line when he has finished. You know why? Because what is inside the vehicle has been upgraded. If you are born again, you may look like you used to look, but you are not who you used to be. What is inside of you has been what? Has been upgraded. Has been what? It has been upgraded. You can't be racing a car with planes. In the same vein, you, when you become born again, there is a supernatural ability that is put inside of you by redemption. Somebody say, okay, how come that some individuals don't see it? Because they don't recognize it. You see, your capacity is present, but you have not tapped into it. The ability is there, but you have not tapped into it. All the resources required for you to be outstanding is inside if you are a child of God, but many have not been able to tap into the reality of it. But I pray today that by the encounter you are having here, that superior ability, superior capacity that has been put in you by Jesus will begin to find expression. Amen. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. amen. I said, somebody believe it, say loud, amen. amen. You believe it, say the loudest, amen. amen. So if I'm a child of God, then there is a superior ability inside of me. You should have a superiority mentality. Is somebody getting it? Change your posture. Change your approach by understanding the reality of what has happened to you in redemption. When I was in school, I discovered when we finished writing any exams, I know many of you can testify of this kind of experience, anytime exams are written, individuals leave the exam hall and they wait outside. How many of you, how many of you know what I'm talking about? They finish, you have finished your paper, you write, you submit, and then the people wait outside. And when they wait outside, they are waiting for others inside to come out. And when they come out, what did you write in number one? What did you write in number two? What did you write in number three? And as they are saying so, they are shouting, Yay! I almost wrote it. Ah! And that's what I was thinking about. Ah! I forgot it. Ah! I can't believe I wrote it. And I discovered every examination. You find them like that. And at the point, I was also among them. And then I began to ask myself, who are these that we are asking what they wrote? And who are those that are asking? If you check it, those who ask are the ones who fail. Those who they ask are the ones who pass. In other words, what they are saying without knowing is this person is intelligent. Whatever he wrote is right. And it is only if I wrote what he wrote that I will pass. Hello? Silver mentality. So suddenly I discovered, oh, so by that action, I am already admitting that somebody is superior to me. I refuse. From that day, when I finished writing, I put my hand in my pocket and I walk out. And I discovered the moment my attitude changed, their attitude to me also changed. They began to ask me, what did you write? What did you write? And I tell them, this is what I wrote. Whether I know whether it's correct or not, I said, that's what I wrote. <laughs> and I discovered they began to shout also, yay! And the more that took place, the more my position began to change. Why? Suddenly, instead of an inferiority mentality, I had a superiority one. Is somebody getting it now? 
there are some attitudes that we exhibit that show that we believe we are inferior. Hello? You must carry yourself with the consciousness that no, I'm in Christ, I cannot have mental crisis. I'm in Christ, I cannot be inferior. I'm in Christ, I'm ordained to be superior. I'm in Christ, my ability is beyond what is being demanded of me. The Bible said in the book of 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it said there is no temptation, no situation, no contention. Nothing that you face that is not common to man. He said, but God is faithful. In every situation, he gives you a way out. There is an answer, there is a solution. There is something to address every question you come across. Shout hallelujah. Is somebody getting it this, uh, this afternoon? So by new birth, we have been upgraded in redemption. I see that upgrade manifesting practically for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I said, I see that upgrade manifesting practically for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And one of the virtues we discover that helps us to steer up this capacity deposit inside of us is the joy of salvation. The joy of salvation. The Bible makes us to understand, David was speaking in Psalm 51 when he said, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. So with salvation comes the deposit of joy. And that joy has a function. The purpose of the joy is to steer up inspiration. Remember we discussed yesterday and we discovered that you engage your mind through labor but also you engage it for excellence through inspiration. And this inspiration is teared up by joy. If you watch it, you will discover that no depressed person ever finds answers. Hello? The pathway to answers is the pathway of joy. I've been in exam halls before where people literally start crying. I have never seen somebody who was crying in the hall that passed. Because the moment your joy disappears, your inspiration goes. But what salvation does is to give you joy. The joy is called joy unspeakable that is full of glory. You find yourself continuously excited and that promotes you to being continuously inspired. You are inspired by God at all times. By reason of this joy of salvation. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. In Isaiah 12 and verse 3, the Bible says, With joy you will draw waters out of the well of salvation. With joy. So it takes joy for you to begin to pull out the deposits of your salvation. And inside the deposit of your salvation, among others, is excellence. But it takes joy. It takes what? It takes joy, unspeakable joy. When that is released into a man's life, that individual begins to enjoy continuous inspiration. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Continuous inspiration. I see a fresh release of the oil of joy upon your life in the name of Jesus. I said I see a fresh release of the oil of joy upon your life in the name of Jesus. And by reason of that, you will never lack inspiration. You believe it, say louder, amen. I say, you believe it, say louder, amen. You believe it, say louder, amen. So the new birth connection gives you an upgraded capacity. And that capacity is tapped into by joy. That is why whenever the devil wants to take advantage of you, one thing he does is to make you feel sad. To make you feel down. What is he trying to do? He's trying to short circuit your ability to draw from the inspiration bank that has been given to you in Christ. Is somebody getting it? It's one thing for you to have access, it's another if for you to have something provided, it's another thing for you to have access to what is provided. And the joy of salvation is what gives you access to that which is provided. Shout hallelujah. I said, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So it doesn't matter what it is that you are doing. Are you a student in school? Are you writing professional exams? Whatever the case may be, 
make sure the joy of salvation is tangible and it is real. If you don't have it, surrender to Christ so you can get it. You see, it is when that takes place that there is an upgraded mentality and then there is an ability to tap into it. Now hear this, without Christ, you can't have joy. The only thing you can have is happiness. And happiness is very temporary and very situational. When things go well, all men can be happy. But when things are not going well, only those that are in Christ can be joyful. Because it is a spiritual virtue. The Bible makes us understand, is that the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace. So joy is one of the deposits. It's one of the virtues made available for you in Christ. And I pray to you, for you again today, that that oil will be renewed upon your life today. Amen. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. amen. I said somebody believe it, say louder, amen. amen. God someone shared the testimony that during the construction of the faith tabernacle, one day, they called him and said, we have this equipment to bring into the tabernacle. And we can't get it in. We need to break the covet. Break the ground or break the covet. One of them. There's no way. The machine is too big. It can't enter. And all the engineers and so forth had thought and thought and thought. And somehow they could not get the answer to how to bring it in. So they came up with that simple solution. Let's break it and pull it in. After that, we can repair it. So they called him and said, no, don't touch anything. I'm coming. And he got there. Rather than getting agitated, getting disturbed, beginning to pace around about how can we break it now? If we break it, are we sure we will not need to break it again tomorrow? Rather than being disturbed, he looked at it and began to pray in the spirit. Tapping into the joy deposit that is within. Rather than getting agitated. You know how some of you, when you see an exam question... Your heart begins to beat, 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 beat. And then you are sweating. You are moving back and forth, looking up and down, looking sides, sideways. Rather than all of that, he settled down. And suddenly he looked at that machine. He said, how high is the tire? They told him. How much clearance are we looking for? They told him. Uh -uh. The clearance we are looking for is less than the height of the tire. Lick the tire, pull it in, pump the tire, walk with it. After that, deflate it again and pull it out. How much is vulcanizer and how much is concrete? Is somebody getting it? You see, joy leaves you with answers. Joy leaves you with answers. Joy leaves you at every point in time with answers. I pray for you again today that the oil of joy will be renewed upon your life. Somebody believe me, say louder, amen. I said the oil of joy will be renewed upon your life. Somebody believe me, say louder, amen. That's the power of joy. So joy will always leave you. It will leave you with answers to questions. It will leave you with answers to questions. I remember one day I was writing an examination and I looked at the question. And looking at the question, I know I don't know the answer to the question. They asked it somehow, and I knew I have to write. It was a theory question. I had to write. And I looked at the question and I smiled. I know I don't know what to write. But I said, Lord, I will start. From where I start, you will help me to finish. I began writing. And I began writing. And I began writing. I wrote and completed the paper and submitted it. Remember I told you I don't wait with others. I submitted it with joy, stepped out of the class. What did you write? I, this is what I wrote. However you like it, this is what I wrote. And I came out and scaled through the class. Passed and broke the barrier. Why? Simply because I refused to panic. I allowed the joy of salvation to find practical expression. Is somebody getting it now? So from today, if you are born again, then know that inside of you there is a joy deposit. 
there is an upgraded capacity. And as you approach every question and every situation, refuse to panic. Let the joy of salvation well up within you. Don't be caught among those who are sweating and having heart palpitation in the midst of examination. Rather be among those who see questions and smile. They look at it and rejoice. They look at it as if we have been waiting for you. I've been waiting for you. This is the kind of question I like. And when you approach it like that, you will see answers streaming to you. That will be your experience from now. Yeah. Number two connection is the purity connection. What did I call it? If you will gain access to excellence, you can only do it by purity. Every outstanding success in scriptures did so by purity. Look at Daniel. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. Daniel refused to defile himself with the king's rich food. What was the result? Verse 17 to 20. He became ten times better than others. You can't join them and beat them. Is somebody getting it now? You can't join them and beat them. You can't be buying examination papers. Buying questions ahead. And expect to excel. Let me tell you something. Any success you get by crookedness will end in disaster. Hello? Any success you get by crookedness will end in a disaster. There is no shortcut that leads to wisdom. Every shortcut cut short. If you want to make it and succeed in anything that you do, commit yourself to righteousness and purity. Is somebody getting it now? Commit yourself to righteousness and purity. The man who copies in an exam can never excel in life. It will amaze you that people even copy in Bible school. Malpracticing in Bible school, the future is not bright. You came to know God and instead of knowing God you, you decided not to learn about God. So while examination you want to come out as, as though you know God. So you are copying the note of neighbor. I mean, you can't make it like that. You can't succeed like that. Let me tell you why there are many career failures. Because they had what I refer to pseudo success in academic the person who copied to pass in school he has nobody to copy in career today one of the plagues that we find in the world is individuals that come out from school and they lack every detail required to succeed a man comes out he says an engineer they call him engineer because he graduated with an engineering degree but he knows nothing about the engineer why because he he, he, he copied the whole way Are you hearing what I'm saying? He copied the whole way. Some of you know, some of you that are here, and you, be, you need to repent because some of you, other people wrote your exam. Hear me and hear me, hear me very well. Every test is set to prove your state. The moment it is not you that took the test, your state is not proven. And once your state is not proven, every promotion or change of level you get only takes you higher at a risk. Is somebody getting in? Before a man climbs a ladder, he checks whether it is standing well. Hello? If you are passing with somebody else's effort, you are climbing a ladder that is not standing well. The higher you go, the greater the fall. A man who falls from this chair, there may be no calamity. But if he falls from the top of the faith tabernacle, there will be a serious problem.
Is somebody getting it now? He said, nobody knows, nobody knows, nobody knows now. Nobody knows. It's only a matter of time. There, there will be a fall at a point. And the higher you go, the greater the fall. So purity is the only way to preserve your access to genuine success. Purity. is the only way to preserve your access to genuine success. This is what the Bible says. Job 20, 28 and verse 28. It said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. The fear of the Lord is not just the way to wisdom. It said, that is wisdom. Show me a cheater, I will show you a foolish man. Hello? Show me a man that fears God and I will show you a wise man. Let us watch it. Shortcuts don't pay. Shortcuts don't pay. They cut short. Hello? They don't pay. They cut short. Let us package ourselves and reflect righteousness. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 19. It said that the foundation of God standed sure. It has this seal. Let every man that named the name of God depart from iniquity. If you are going to have God backing you and assisting you, you can't compromise righteousness. Hello? You can't compromise righteousness. You can't compromise righteousness. Stand for what is right. I love the testimony that that brother gave. He said, you better sort the lecturers out. Sort the lecturers out. So that they can sort your exam score out. Sort them out. Sort them out. And he began to give scriptural reasons why he could not. You see, those who excel in righteousness will excel forever. The stars that last are the ones that have cleanliness at the source. Now, hear this and hear very well. Think about it. If you look at a bulb, a light bulb, the cleaner the bulb, the brighter the light. Is that not true? If you put a bulb, a light bulb inside mud and put it back up and light it, the light will begin to fade. It is cleanliness that gives birth to stardom. It is cleanliness, purity, that gives birth to stardom. Purity is what gives birth to stardom. If you want to actually shine in life, if you want to excel in life, then purity cannot be compromised. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The success of the ungodly is temporal. But the success of the righteous is eternal. If you want to last a life, then make sure you go the way of righteousness. Is somebody getting it now? Make sure you go the way of righteousness. Purity. Sanctity. Is what preserves your access. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. hallelujah. There are many today that via this encounter you are having, an end is coming to every crookedness. Yeah. I said an end is coming to every crookedness. Yeah. I said an end is coming to every crookedness. Yeah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. Yeah. I said somebody believe it, say louder, amen. amen. I've been privileged to sit on a number of interview panels. And I tell you, I question many individuals on the reality of their education. Because they are certificated, but they are not educated. Why are they not educated? Because they didn't try. Everything that seems to have been given to them, they don't know it. And if you don't know it, then I wonder how you pass. You came in as a first class student. 
and basic things about your own line you are not aware of how did you pass how did you pass so he carries a certificate but he's frustrated in life because he can't move forward because the ability for for which he was certificated he does not have is somebody getting it now that's why i said the the success of the righteous is eternal while the success of the ungodly is temporary but for you today i see a turnaround coming your way in the name of jesus christ i said i see a turnaround coming your way in the name of jesus so purity gives you access to wisdom and wisdom is a vital force for excellence now number three connection is the word connection the word connection the word connection there is nothing that makes wise like god's word the bible said in psalm 119 verse 130 the entrance of his word giveth light and it gives understanding to the simple if you want to improve your mind increase your light the more access you have to the light of god's word the more intensity god's wisdom the more intensity sorry the light of god begins to you know manifest in your life so the light of god is what breaks the hold of darkness whatever seeks to becloud you i told you yesterday about the man called george washington Carver, who would open his bible and read it and it would steer his mind and out of granite he brought out 300 products you see there is creativity in you but there is a steering rod in the world it is the word that used to steer up the creativity within you in order to produce results god servant shared how that when he was a student he said when he studied his book and he looked as if the book is not going in he takes the bible opens it and begins to read and by the time he studies the scripture for a while and that has teared up his mind he goes back to the book and suddenly what he couldn't understand before begins to enter because the word is simply stirring up the capacity of the mind if you have a cup of tea and inside that tea there is sugar but it is not stirred the tea will not be sweet you see the sugar is there but the sugar is not in every aspect of that tea so you find out that you are drinking sugarless tea with sugar inside there are many people that are carrying inside of them the capacity of god the wisdom of god but yet they are operating without that wisdom why it is not stirred up it is not stirred up paul told timothy he said from a child you have known the scripture which is able to make thee wise so the word of god makes wise it is an instrument for the stirring up of the wisdom of god within you shout hallelujah <laughs> the more you gain access to it the more light you find enters your mind and as it enters your mind it illuminates it for greater operation shout hallelujah that's the power of the word that's the power of the word i'm not just talking about knowing the word i'm talking about gaining access to the light of the word gaining access to the light of the word i shared my experience here yesterday how that i came across what that scripture said you have the mind of christ you have the mind of christ and i began to challenge my challenges on the basis of the mind of christ i saw myself somehow naturally being limited but i asked myself no now if i have the mind of christ that mind is not limited there is nothing that can restrain it so as a student that was struggling in mass i started going for further mass lesson to solve problems why if i have the mind of christ then i must attack what the mind of christ can attack so i began to confront those issues i began to attend those lessons and confront those matters and before i know i knew it i saw my brain take it take a new dimension why because it was teared up by one word you have the mind of christ now hear this i had known that scripture for years but the light of the scripture came up 
And when the light came, suddenly it upgraded my capacity. Is somebody getting it now? It upgraded my capacity. I tell you with all humility and with all sincerity, I don't believe there's anything I can't understand. I don't believe there's anything that I can't understand. I tell people all the time when we meet, explain it. Explain it. Don't confuse us. Explain it. I, under, I can understand it. I know it's your specialty. Explain it. I don't believe there's anything that I can't understand. Praise God. When I was in my last session, they were doing construction. And the engineers, you know, engineers, they like to, they like to, you know, confuse people with grammar. They will call one word. I say, explain it. What's the meaning? It has a meaning. Explain it. <laughs> don't come. I mean, I can understand it. I don't believe there's anything I can understand because of what I saw from one scripture that I have the mind of Christ. Is somebody getting it? That has become my approach. Anytime I'm in any place, I tell people, explain it. You don't, you don't talk. Grandma is very, very, is very sweet in the mouth, but explain it has meaning. When you call, engineer will call something one big word. He say not. He's talking about not. <laughs> explain it, explain it. Tell me the meaning. Is somebody getting it? But many of us, because we don't have that perspective or capacity, when somebody says, they blow one big word, they say, okay, yes. No problem. As you have said it, no, no chance. As you say. As you say, we agree. As you say, no problem. I had nothing to do with building, but when they began to speak, and I was doing this in the UK, they would give you all manner, you know, Englishman, Englishman would give you all kinds of language to confuse simple things. I tell them, listen, explain it. There is nothing that cannot be understood. You went to school, they explained it to you, they explained it to me. <laughs> As you understood it, I will understand it. Is somebody getting it now? So, there is nothing... I, that is my understanding from that scripture. Can Jesus come to a situation I can't understand? No. So, why, can, why will you tell me there is something I can't understand? Why will you tell me, tell me there is something I can't understand? If you take me to neurosurgeon, when he finishes blowing his grammar, and I tell him, explain it, I will understand it. You take me to an astronaut... When he finishes, I tell him, look, you learnt it. Tell me what they told you. I will understand it. And if you know, if you can't explain it, I believe you don't understand it. Is somebody getting it now? Your, your mentality must change. I said your mentality must change. I said your mentality must change. In the name of Jesus Christ. So, the word of God is that connection point. It tears your mind. It renews your ability. It fires up your capacity to produce supernaturally. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Is somebody getting it now? Number four. Number four connection is the diligence connection. What did I call it? The diligence connection. And we touched on this a bit yesterday. So I won't spend too much time here. A diligent, the diligence connection. By this we are talking about being committed to study. Anyone who wants to excel must commit themselves to the process of study. Second Timothy 2 verse 15, he said, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a watchman, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So you must commit yourself to doing one, to study. Commit yourself to one. Commit yourself to study. No man becomes an expert in a place he has no effort. Hello? Commit yourself to study. Now, hear this. Most people don't know this. It has been proven that anything that a man puts 50,000 hours into, he will become a specialist in. Anything. 50,000. Anything a man puts 50,000 hours concentrated in, he will become a specialist in that area. Hello? Hello? But what most of us do is to dodge the labor component. Those who run from work reduce their worth. Be committed to diligence. Be committed to diligence. Be committed to diligence. 
those who study while others are playing, they will play while others are feeling. Hello? <laughs> now, here it is. Well prepared students spend the time after their examinations rejoicing while others spend the time after examination praying. Hello? Many of you know how much tension you are under after examination the result comes. Prayer is intense. But well prepared students spend their time after examination rejoicing. While others, it is then that their spiritual engagement is intensified. They apply fasting, apply prayer, apply all the forces of the spirit. Why? They didn't prepare. Is somebody getting me now? You see, if you prepare yourself through diligence, you have prepared yourself for excellence. If you prepare yourself through diligence, you have prepared yourself for what? For excellence. You have prepared yourself for excellence. See, as that a man diligent in his business, he will stand before kings, he will not stand before mere men. So commit yourself to diligence. Finally, number five is the discipline connection. What do I call it? The discipline connection. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 12, all things may be lawful, but not all things are expedient. Amen. Discipline. Discipline. Committing yourself to that which is expedient. Amen. Committing yourself to that which is one. That which is expedient. That's what discipline is all about. When exams are coming around, there are disciplines that are required. When you are pursuing anything, there are disciplines that are required. If you are going to succeed and excel, discipline yourself. You go to school, to university, stop roaming about. Stay in your room. You came there for a purpose. Is somebody getting it now? You came there for a purpose. Stay and do what you came there to do. Package yourself appropriately. I was telling somebody some time ago, I said, I've been in Canaan land now from the beginning of this year till now. Outside of evangelism, I've gone outside the gate, I think twice. And I was going one on assignment to go and visit the family who had some challenge. And then the second time I was traveling somewhere. That's the two times I've left this gate of Canaan land in 2018. Outside of that is only evangelism. I'm not that... I have something I'm here for. And don't feel bad for me because it's not as if I'm feeling like going somewhere. Because there are some people say, hey, yeah. Ah. The pastor is suffering. No. I know why I am here. I am here for something. I'm here for an assignment. You'll never find anyone who will stand out that is roaming about. Here this old to and fro is the devil's characteristic. What did Satan say? I've been going to and fro. You find a young person going somewhere. Where are you going? I'm just going there. Okay, me, I'm just going here. Will you follow me? Okay, let's go together. He has no there is no plan, no discipline, no decorum. Is somebody getting it? No decorum. The other day I was discussing with the pastor DBC here and he, he, he told me something was happening on the road. I said, ah, when did you go out? Because the two of us don't go anywhere. The circumference is very easy to know. I tell people if you are looking for me and you don't find me, you didn't look for me. Because not to, there are only, the places you can find me are three. Church, office, home. Triangular movement. There is nothing else. There is nothing else. Outside of that, if I am not in any of the three, I am looking for souls. But that he say, he say, he came to the office, you don't know where he is, and he's not in the house, and he's not in the church, is a lie. It's not me you are looking for. Triangular movement, part time. We call ourselves on intercom, not mobile. Why? Even though we are mo we have mobile and we are mobile, we don't go mobile. We are in one place, doing one thing. 
at every but you find a student he has entered into a new campus and within two months you know the whole town you are roaming about I am very observant when I see somebody and you have just entered campus and you are telling me everywhere in the town. I know that you didn't go there to study. You went there to play. He says, see, uh, if you are looking for cow meat, this is the place to go. If you are looking for soya joint, this is the place to go. Uh, if you, are <laughs> you know everywhere within two months of being in that town, you have gone there to play. And I know what your result will be at the end of it. Because you have registered for failure. Discipline, discipline. Tell yourself, I will discipline myself. Say loud, I will discipline myself. Like you mean it, I will discipline myself. Like you really mean it, I will discipline myself. You see, all of these are simply channels that will pull out the deposit God has put inside of you. What we are saying simply is this. The ability and the grace is available by redemption. But you can only pull it out by engaging these vital forces. You will never fail again. Yeah. Lift your right hand to heaven. Give God thanks. Lift your right hand. Give God thanks. Give Him praise. Give Him glory. Give Him honor. Give Him adoration. Celebrate Him. Celebrate Him is worthy. Father, thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Now, by this anointing, whatever represents any yoke upon your life, standing against the excellence that God has ordained for you, this anointing marks the breaking of that yoke. He said, for in that day, so maybe this is that day. He said, the body shall be lifted up from off your shoulder, and the yoke from off your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. By this anointing today, every yoke that has been limiting your capacity to experience excellence academically, the yoke is destroyed in the name of Jesus. The Bible said upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. You have come to Zion. You have come to Shiloh. You are on the ground of liberty where your hanging inheritance of excellence must be delivered. By this anointing that inheritance is delivered. In the name of Jesus. Stretch your hand here. Now, Father, we decree right now as this oil is being committed and dedicated to you, it becomes the Shiloh oil. The oil and the grace upon Shiloh begins to answer for each one here. The same way others have come testifying, every partaker of this class will testify of excellence. By this anointing, we say an end comes to mediocrity. Yeah. An end comes to failure. Yeah. An end comes to confusion. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. As you depart from here, I decree the release of a new dimension of wisdom. Yeah. The wisdom of the ancients becomes your portion from now. Yeah. The wisdom of heaven becomes your experience from now. Yeah. We decree down. This oil is blessed and consecrated in Jesus' precious name. Take your seat. The oil will come round. One touch put upon your head and begin to decree and declare. Tell God what must happen. What must happen by this anointing. Your liberty is being established. You are praying both in the spirit and praying in your understanding as the oil comes your way. Refuse to be silent. Pray intensely. Pray intensely. You take it seriously. You come out gloriously. Pray intensely. Pray intensely from the depth of your heart. As this oil is coming upon my life, something must change for me. New dimension must come upon me in the name of Jesus. If you have been anointed already, rise your feet right now. Rise your feet very quickly wherever you are. And quickly now lift your hand to heaven and begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him for what you have received already. Begin to thank him for what has come upon your life already. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Begin to give him praise. Begin to give him glory. Begin to give him on, uh, honor and uh, give him all the glory due unto his name. Celebrate the faithfulness of our God. He's worthy of praise. He's worthy of glory. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name. Thank you. Blessed be your name. For in Jesus' precious name we are praying. Lift your hand to heaven. 
by this anointing every yoke of memory loss i decree it destroyed in the name of jesus every yoke of mental blockage you enter into the hall and suddenly you forget all that you know and when the exam finishes you remember all you forgot I decree that yoke destroyed in the name of Jesus. Every satanic oppression seeking to withstand the excellence deposit of God inside of you, I decree those installations destroyed in the name of Jesus. From today, the wisdom of Daniel, the wisdom of Solomon, the wisdom of David, and the wisdom of Jesus becomes your portion in the name of Jesus. I declare right now, from this day onwards, retention, retention, retention. There are people that God is giving today photographic memory. In the name of Jesus. From this day onward, that spirit of forgetfulness is destroyed. In the name of Jesus. The spirit of understanding is multiplied. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. The last failure you had is the last one you will have forever. In fact, the last average score you got will be the last one forever. In Jesus' precious name. Lift your hand to heaven and begin to give him thanks.